the topic I was given today. As we start, I want to throw your mind to one scripture, um, which is in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. That's going to be our basis. It's not a sermon, but uh, it should be a point for us to reason through. And at this time, God was telling uh, the lady, they had just finished eating and uh, the fruit, she went and ate the fruit and brought to her husband. And so God was apportioning statements. Should I say punishment? And so to the snake, he said, you'll eat soil. To Adam, he said, you're going to sweat through hard labor. To the woman, he said, among the many things, he said, your desire shall be for your husband. We want to look at it from different angles. Was it a curse? Was it a command? What was it from the different angles that you look at, at that statement? And I want to relate it to the topic of glowing, growing, and glowing. And the three, uh, three, three, three things that add to your growing and glowing, or to your growing and stressing. You're either growing and glowing, or you're growing and stressing. If we look at the main of old, the Bible says Moses was 120 years and he could see. His vision was clear. His back was straight. Adam got children uh, at the age of 100, 90. Sarah, Sarah was that old, and Adam was that old. What has changed from that time to our time that is causing us, instead of glowing as we grow, we, we grow and we stress. The things that make a woman glow, grow and stress are about three. Number one is confidence. Let me expound on the confidence and then I can go to the second one. Now, we have all seen that uh, According to God, you shall desire your husband. Now let me tell you there is stress in the families. And that kind of stress, because it is a command from God, has not given women the, the, the ageful, growing and glowing, because we are stressing. How do we go through this command of desiring our husband and we will still glow? Number one is we need to build confidence. Uh, I know men, there are so men who are like Adam. They don't give their wives time. They don't give them attention. And so like if many of the women, many of us go out there to look for the attention, to look for the food, to look for the provision, to look for the so many things. And during that time, we meet so many snakes which talk to us. Of course, to the gentlemen who are listening, uh, who will listen to this video, if you do not take care of your wife, if you do not give her time, there is a snake out there that will give the time that will provide. And so where does confidence come in? Remember when you were dating, before you married, this man was really after you. And guess what you did? You did not allow your stomach to bulge. You already sat straight. I can see uh, from the time that we are here, most of us are seated like this. Okay? Now, the moment you sit and you bend your back like this, these muscles will get used to that position. Your backbone is going to curve. And before you know it, you are into a shape that even when you try to lose the weight, the muscles are bulging in a specific position the breasts will get out of the position where they are supposed to do because the position has been like this. 
the shoulders will broaden and they will spread and the muscles will come around these points. And so when you add on uh, an unfitting bra, before you know it, you have lost the shape of your back and the chest area. And that will cause you to lose confidence. Now, the moment you lose confidence, then you have given up. I know uh, in this meeting they have talked about dieting and dieting and more di eating right. When you meet a person who has lost confidence, even if you tell them to diet, they will always give up. Confidence requires you to know what you want at the end of the day. What do you want to, to see yourself at the end of the day? And the man will always lie to you. He says, it is okay. I, I don't mind. I, why are you worried about the outside world when for me I'm not complaining? They are lying. He has gotten used to you in that manner and you are like to whoever it may concern. He doesn't care, you don't care, the attraction dies a natural death. The confidence goes. That is why a woman who has lost her shape, has lost her confidence, will always be angry at whoever speaks to her husband. Why? You have lost confidence. Your size has given up. Your dressing has given up. Your character is giving way because you have lost confidence. Now, sometimes people say, I don't mind my size. You will know that you are not comfortable with your size if someone looks at you and says, hey, my sister, you've gained weight. If you are happy with yourself, you'll say, I actually worked so hard to gain this weight. Okay? And if you are not confident and you are not happy about that size, you will complain. Is that the right word you could say? <laughs> and then you go to your friend. Banange, that girl kumanyira's me. She met me and the first thing she could say, I have gained weight. Of course you are not confident about your shape, about your size. Now, when we are talking about confidence, there are things that you can do to enhance your confidence. Number one, it's exactly what we are doing here. Mind your diet. I will tell you that at one time I was in those hundreds of kilograms. My chest was around 40 something. And every time people used to ask me if I was pregnant. And my, my, my backside had, hmm, had fallen. It, uh, one of my videos I talk about how, what I did to lift up my backside as yet. And so I was sweating, I was tired, and I got uh, what they call an inflamed heart. At this time, if there was India, I should have gone to India to have my heart operated. And that is when I started the dieting. Around 1998, I started minding my portion. The reason I did that, I realized I had lost so much confidence. I was no longer comfortable with, in, in public. I complained about everyone who mentioned uh, anything to do with my size, with my body. Anyone who didn't complain to me, it was like a crime. And so to gain my confidence, I had to mind my diet. Now, doing portions can be a lot difficult. How do you manage those portions? There are different ways that you can do it. But the most important thing is that you speak to yourself every day. Stand before a mirror. Look at the person that is inside that mirror and talk to this person. I talk to myself every day. I look at myself. Uh, if I see that I've gained so much weight, I will say, you've got to lose that. And when you've got to lose that weight, you put in place a lot of energy, a lot of courage, a lot of thought into what you want to do. Now, don't tell yourself, I'm going to do uh, a diet for this month. It is a health challenge. Make this health challenge your lifestyle. When I started doing the health challenge, I knew I was doing it for six months, and then I would go back to my usual lifestyle. 
But after six months, I loved what I was seeing, and I made it my permanent lifestyle. Now, I guarantee you, I am not so good with potions. I try. If you tell me a handful, I will make sure the handful is really... Handful. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure the handful is really handful. Uh, the banana, I will make sure I eat it. Then I will tell myself, you cannot leave food on the plate. That is, an, you know, and I will finish it. And so I resolved that whatever comes to my plate must be healthy. And I convinced my mind about that, and it has worked for me. And then I also decided that uh, eating so many small portions of carbohydrates in a day, I cannot manage. You see, if I'm eating my matoke, I really want to eat that matoke and do justice. I cannot eat one piece. And so what did I put in place? I decided that I'm going to eat one meal every single day. And I wake up in the morning, uh, or maybe at lunchtime, I will eat my full plate of matoke. If you can do portions, they are the best. If you fail to do portions, that is how I went through it. I do my, my big portion of, of food during the day, and I make sure I have around six to seven, eight hours to digest that food out of the way. And what do I do in between? I will do avocado, I will do carrot, I will do cucumber, I will do everything else healthy, uh, and I will get through. Mm -hmm. And I have managed my weight between 69, when it goes beyond, it comes to 71. That's the worst it has come. I will do 71 when I know I have misbehaved, uh, like I go so much in the field, I don't have uh, a lot of good food, so I eat. I even drink the soda, purity, don't kill me. Uh, <laughs> I do everything, but it can only go up to 71, then I can bring it back to 59. So it's a lot of good stuff, portions and determination, and making it your lifestyle. Don't make it a three months, a one month, a six month. Make it a lifestyle so that you can also do away with, with the, the so many sicknesses that come. That is gaining your confidence by eating right and glowing. Number two, managing your confidence so that you can grow and glow. Number two is the way you dress. Okay? I'm going to stand so that you can look at me. Mm -hmm. I am 54 this year. Mm -hmm. Am I struggling? No. no. I'm not complaining. The only thing I need to go now and do is to have a thorough scrub on my face because I have never done it to remove all the dead cells that I had because of too much exposure to the sun. And so there is this black line that covers my face I'm going to go and do that. And when I do that, I will look 28 to you. Woo. Whenever I go for medical checkup, they tell me my heart is as old as 28. Wow. And so I still have. Now remember at one time I was dying of heart inflammation. Mm. But my heart has rolled back because of dieting to 28 years. Mm. Uh, my body, I am not complaining at all. I do so much work. Young men and young women will fall down and they are struggling after the field work and I'm picking the next engineer to go back to the site. This backside had fallen completely. It was not there. It was small, small muscles. Really, do I need to stress or wear a fake one? <laughs> no. No. It has come up. And so that is about confidence through your diet and discipline with food. Mm. Then you can glow as you grow. Now, the number two, I'm going to demonstrate it. Okay, so when you look at me now, am I the same person who was talking to you a few no. minutes back? No. I, I forgot I didn't carry the, the head wrap. <laughs> I should have put the head wrap. And the way you dress will determine the matters of your heart. Okay? So when you wake up in the morning like this, when I stepped out to the way I was dressed before, my daughter is my, is my witness. My husband was doing his, his exercises in the compound. He looked at me, he said, wow, you're hot. <laughs> and he hugged me because I was dressed. 
I have never heard him make a comment when I'm wearing this dress in the house. So many women who are not glowing, you wake up and you dress in this, and then you start with a maid. You, this place is not clean. Of course, this dress makes you too lazy. By the time you're wearing this, you're too lazy, you cannot do anything. Okay? You can't do anything for yourself. You're lazy, you're going to complain, you're going to quarrel. Of course, there's nothing striking about you. And so you, even your face, there's nothing that will make you want to have that beautiful face. So when you wear this long dress, you, you, you are even walking the way you want in these flat shoes. You are just walking, your hand will be here, and you're complaining, you're tired. It's like you're carrying the whole world on your head. Do I look glowing? No. <laughs> and yet I'm the same person. And so when you walk with this, you're going to start giving explanations as to why. Oh, I wasn't expecting visitors. <laughs> and you eat the whole food. Aha! Uh -huh. This one is not going to squeeze you. Yeah. So you will sit on that plate of cassava in the morning, you will eat the cassava. Mm. Take your cup of tea. And then before you know it, I was telling them that when they tell me portions of, of peanuts, I don't eat your kind of portion. Mm. I really make sure that my hand, the handful is really full. Mm. So you make that big handful and you eat the nuts. When they tell you to eat uh, a snack, you sit down and eat the whole popo and you finish it. <laughs> Even when it is good, it is bringing in too much sugar. And so because the dress is not fitting, so the stomach keeps growing, and it grows and it grows. And then when you're trying to wear this other one, and it is squeezing, you become frustrated. Now, a frustrated woman will never glow. A frustrated woman will be rejected. Now, why should we dress so well? Why should you make up your body? If you are trying to eat so well, or to dress so well so that you can impress your husband, let me tell you, stop, give up, because it will never work. The day they don't appreciate you, it will not work. Let me remove this dress, because I'm losing my confidence already. <laughs> okay, sometimes you say you're going to do exercises. And uh, remember, exercises is the beginning of your confidence gaining. True. Now, everything that you're going to do in those exercises, start loving yourself the way you want to do. Don't do it because Coach Purity is telling you to do it. She is your support system. In fact, every time you are going to do them, think about her size. And that she, if you are going to run two kilometers, run the third one. Because you want her size. Let her, her physical presence be your motivation. And so everything that you are going to do, starting from the plate you are going to put your food on, let it give you confidence. Don't get those small, huge, huge, heavy, very heavy plates. Get a very beautiful luminac, okay? Put that luminac, small one, on your, on your place. Let someone look at it, whether they are visitors or not visitors. Actually, in my house, the best things we are using them. Visitors, when they come, they would use anything. I don't keep plates or nice cups for visitors. I use the best for every day. So, starting from the plate, the clothes you use for gym, make sure they are outstanding. How do I look? I'm not going to put on the top. Now, when I see it, I want to run many more kilometers mm. so that this shape that I am doing, I am, I am gaining. I keep thinking about spirit every time I'm doing exercises. You look at her flat tummy, then I'm like, I must do the extra mile. So before you, you think about pleasing anybody else, make sure you yourself are happy. When I was wearing this, I wasn't feeling good. Even when I'm running, I know it, it is not working. But now that I'm wearing this, I can run, I can show off, I am feeling so confident, I'm so happy with myself. And you know the difference is, people will turn to look at you the next look. When you are in this, <laughs> nobody will give the next look. Now let me tell you ladies, the moment other people stop looking at you. Your husband is, is not different from them, okay? He is not different from them. A woman is meant to be loved, to be attractive. 
the moment you lose that attraction, then the glowing stops there. And so you're going to grow, you're going to start being sick, you're going to start being frustrated, and your confidence will go. And when the confidence has gone, lifestyle diseases, all the trouble, the bad character, the quarreling will all fall in place. Okay, here I am again. Now, that confidence that I'm talking about begins with you, inside of you. You do it for yourself. The moment someone doesn't comment about your dress, know that there is nothing exciting. And if the whole world is not excited about you, even the person you are with will not be excited about you. Now remember the first thing that we read is that you will desire, you will desire your husband. That's a command that God gave. And that is where most of the fights come from. You're fighting because he, he doesn't appreciate you. Of course, no man will appreciate you if you have lost size. He will still love you, yes. But you are not going to be part of his life. Okay? You are not going to be part of his worry. He, of course, why should he go and shop for you? You are not a threat at all. Remember, we, men are hunters. He hunted you when he was dating you. Now, when you change from what you wear, trouble begins. He will start going out with the boys because you're not so proud to show off. If he married you when you were big, the only thing you can do is to refine yourself, maintain that shape. There are some people who are big who are healthy in their size. Their blood pressure is okay, they have no cholesterol, their body is naturally big. And if your husband got you when you are that big, Keep it. Don't reduce. Because if you reduce, you'll be a different person. If you reduced, if you, you were married like me who was size 8, and you blow up and you are size 22, in fact, you never used to care. I would be there. It were, I was so stressing. My talking, my complaints, my this. Because I, I, I was craving for attention, and he was not giving it to me. Until when I decided enough was enough, I cut off this weight and I became a center of his attraction. These girls call me their daddy's trophy. I am a trophy. How do I maintain it? I do it for myself. If I am eating, I am eating for myself. What I am, I am so happy with myself. And the others who are attracted to me, the others who admire me, are an added advantage. So number one, we said you must gain confidence through what you eat. No man will ever respect a woman who sits on six pieces of bread and ten eggs and eats them. In fact, you become undesirable. It is so detestful for a woman to sit with a huge plate of food and feed it, put chicken and put pork and put beef. If there is goat, you put goat, and you're walking. Chapati. Uh-huh. Mm. Chapati. And you add sweet potato. Then you add <laughs> nobody. You are not attractive at all. In fact, you will never glow. Look at your kind of plate and know this. I'm going to glow, grow and glow. Or I'm going to grow and stress. It all begins from your plate. And then number two, it goes to the what you dress on. So mind about those things very well. Number three of glowing and growing and glowing is your inner person. What is inside of you? What thoughts do you think? The thoughts that you think will reflect on your face. A person who wakes up and is angry, of course your face will squeeze. Hmm? You're looking at her. Yesterday she sent me a, a video of a mother who is trying to, to, to teach her child study, you know, help the mother helping the son with homework. And the boy seems not to understand, and the mother's face is like squeezed. You, you don't understand. You know anger, how it does your face? 
And those squeezing becomes permanent. A person who is permanently angry will have an ugly, squeezed face because you are always biting your teeth. And it becomes part of you. A person who is always, just look at her face. Her eyes are glowing. Her smile is cute, even in her gentleness. A person who is happy inside, it will show on your face. There will be a lot of peace. There will be a lot of relaxation. There will be a lot of confidence exhuming from within. I mean, if I am big and I'm not complaining, I'm happy with my size, or I'm still working on it, I am not going to be offended if someone says, you have put on weight. Someone says, oh, you have put on weight, I will say, yes, I know, and I am working on it. Because I have inner peace. I am not fighting with everyone. I am not looking that the world is against me, and so living in a war zone all the time. The moment you don't have peace within, it's going to be disastrous on your physical body. A person who is so worried and so stressful, they will have ulcers permanently. The body will produce so much acid because you will not digest all the food. The brain is going to be in fighting mode all the time, so it may not even help your heart to release enough blood. And so before you know it, that's why they say some people die because of anger. Anger kills my sister. Stress kills. There are women who have fought and fought and fought and they have died. You can never glow if you do not have inner peace. And so what do we do with all these challenges around us? Remember what we started with. Gain confidence. Eat your food very well, dress very well, choose peace. And you can only have peace if you give your life to Jesus Christ. He's the Prince of Amen. Peace. Amen. The moment he comes into your heart, you're going to learn to forgive. You're going to let these other things go. You're going to learn to forgive even when the person is not asking for forgiveness. You're going to learn to be at peace in your home and say, if this cannot happen, then I will let go. And it is that peace that passes all understanding that is going to help you to glow as you grow. And as you age, it is going to be a blessing. I don't feel shy talking about my age because I know God has interest in the way that I grow. And as I grow, he's not so worked up yet that he wants me to start holding a stick on a bend and back at 60 years. If you look at these celebrities, they are so much at peace. They don't mind. Whether you abuse them, they don't care. Tomorrow they will post the next thing. You will be struggling there with their pictures, but they are growing and growing. You look at a 70-year-old, there is one, thing, one picture, um, video that Purity posted of this 80-year-old. Was it 60 or 80? She eats only fresh, raw, and cooked food, and she looks like a 40-year-old. And she's glowing as she's growing. So God didn't purpose us to start bending our backs and, and struggling even at 60 years. I want to be 70 when I still can walk, when I can still do the things that I love. I want when Jesus comes, I am not struggling and start to calling him to come because, <laughs> hmm? because I see myself going to die anytime. I want him to come when I'm strong and healthy and I will say, Jesus, thank you for giving me this long life for enjoying this earth. Now let me tell you, some people say, eh, this world is not our home, we are just passing through. For now it is your home. Because God has placed you here, it is your home. Look at the plants, read the Bible, what the Bible says. If you are going to misbehave, you are going to eat so many things that you know. Now let me tell you, God's purity. Mm -hmm. There are those times when I misbehave. I would sit with that big cake there in front of me and I would say, oh God, you said by prayer we sanctify all things. <laughs> prayer about is sanctified. But the moment your brain has known that that food is bad, that food is not going to stay so much in your body, the body will dispose it off. 
Don't make it a habit to do the wrong things. But look at the Bible, what food they recommend. I mean, Jesus ate fish. I, I don't remember when they said he was busy there roasting meat and enjoying. But he ate fish. That one he did very faithful. Uh -huh. He roasted for them. Even when he resurrected, the first thing he ate was fish. He, they ate vegetables. They rolled uh, that uh, uh, and, and the bread. The bread. Uh, try and do the things. The foods that have seed with them, enjoy them. Now, the moment your system is aware of what you should do, it should reject everything else. There are times the body will need something, and you're really craving it. If you deny yourself, you're going to hustle. Eat it. But when you eat it, when your mind is already fully aware that it is bad, after eating it, you'll be frustrated, then you'll not desire it again. And with that, my sisters, we are meant to grow and glow. We are not supposed to stress as we grow. And in all things, by the grace of God, through prayer and commitment and, and decision making, we can all grow. Enjoy our marriages, enjoy our children, enjoy everything that, that, that God gives us. God bless you. And the, I will invite you to subscribe to my videos and like and share by the grace of God. Thank you so much. Wow.